In last week's Dinosaur Variety episode, lots of people expressed an interest in seeing a full video based around the idea of mecha dinosaurs. And I was really into the idea too, because I had a whole bunch of images in my head of different people riding different kinds of mechanical dinosaurs in different ways, and I really wanted to bring those to life. So today, as requested, we are going right into a full episode of that. With, of course, the same three narrators from the Dinosaur Variety episode. Dr. Champagne McGregor, Vasilio Kuznet, and good old Benicia. Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Alright, look. As much as dinosaurs ain't exactly my favorite topic to talk about after how traumatizing it was working for that ridiculous Dino Cross Park, I am kinda curious about more of them mechanical dinosaurs you made, Benny. I agree with Dr. Champagne, partially because my world does not have machinery such as this, but also simply that, uh, what you call, Mecha Rex, it did look very intriguing, Benjamin. You show us more, yes? Alright, if you two insist, I'll tell you about some of the other ones I done built. So, as I said, the project was for these folks who were on a museum out in Drumheller, Alberta, Canada. Cause they needed something to fight off all the supervillains that was robbing tourists in their town. Yeah, we played now, Benny. You just told us that, like, ten minutes ago. Yeah, but I just thought I should recap in case anyone forgot anything. We do not forget, Benjamin. Our memories are not that terrible. I know, I wasn't exactly recapping for you two, but anyway, the Mecha Rex was the first one I done built for him, and it was one of the tougher ones, but not all of them were big and chunky and tanky sort of looking. Some were smaller and slicker, like the Velocimech. That was one ridden on by this gal, Ellie. See, she specifically requested that one of the mechs be able to be ridden on like a motorcycle. You know, with the person on top instead of locked away in a cockpit. Excuse me, Benjamin? Uh, what, silly? What is this term you so casually say? A cockpit? Oh, right, I guess that might sound a little bit weird since you ain't got no airplanes or nothing in your world. It's a term for a place that pilots sit inside of an airplane, a ship or something. Ah, alright, well, strange. Uh, who did it get this name? Huh, I never really thought about that before. Maybe because only dudes used to be able to be pilots in my world or something? So, a, uh, you know, cockpit? I never thought about that either. That name is both a little sad, but also kind of funny now. Full agree on that one, bud. Anyway, Ellie got exactly what she was asking for. I based a sort of motorcycle mount mech on one of them raptor things with the extra big sharp toe on each foot, the velociraptor or something. She got real technical with me saying that for it to be a velociraptor it would need to be a bunch smaller and blah blah blah. You know, her being a dino museum curator person, she and the other folks was obviously a little bit picky about that kind of stuff. Apparently one of these things I made wasn't even technically based on a dinosaur, but a like a sky lizard or something, but in the end she did love the mech. The thing could run almost a hundred miles an hour and had a big waggly tail to counterbalance when she made sharp turns and stuff. Now I know the photo is still loading on your weirdly slow internet, but this thing don't look like it's got a lot of weapons on it. Doesn't even look like its mouth opens or nothing. Wasn't this thing made to help him fight off supervillains? Yeah, sorta. Th that's a whole thing. See, these folks wasn't exactly into the idea of shooting up no other folks, even if those folks were supervillains who was attacking and robbing people. <laughs> Freaking Canadians. If they had it their way, the dinosaurs probably would have shot presents of complimentary jazz and maple syrup or something. They wanted the things to be tough and able to fight, but not really hurt folks too bad, so the Velocimech mostly just used its tail as a weapon. I also gave it sort of dulled blades at the ends of its arms and, and its clawed feet, but Ellie didn't really have much intention of using those things to fight folks. She did once use the claws to cut open a car that had crashed and get someone out who was stuck inside, so you know, that's something I guess. I'll be honest, Benjamin, of all people you have told us you've made mechanical armors for and best, this one seems the most honorable so far. Yeah, they was pretty good, wasn't one of my shadier jabs. Although they did end up eventually needing a pretty tanky sorta of mech. Even that one didn't shoot lethal rounds, or sorta, but it was pretty attack ready by the standards of these mechs. Let's get into that one next, yeah? The Tricera tank. Sorry. 
So I'm going to go out on a limb here from the name and say that this next one was a Triceratops mech. Nah, Triceratank is a deceiving name. It's actually a Plesiosaurus mech. I don't believe you. As you shouldn't. You're really getting to know me, huh, handsome? Anyway, the Triceratank was a late addition to the group. Sorta. Because as I mentioned last time, once most of the villains in Alberti got a look at the Mecha Rex and some of the other mechs, they all kind of just backed off. Most of the villains running around was low-level sort of goons with mid-tier powers and gadgets and stuff. But the museum got a bunch of publicity for having cool dino mech things to protect a city, and the dinos attracted the attention of a very specific supervillain. Was it like a clown who could shoot meteorites or something? No, but I see what you did there, and you're kinda in the right ballpark. The guy was called Frost Tusk, and he was this big super strength meathead kinda guy with a mammoth sorta theme, who could also create ice from his knuckles. He was a real tough villain that pulled off massive robberies in Craftopolis, and in Emerald Central, a whole bunch of places in my world that are chock-a-block full of superheroes. He was always one to make a big splashy scene whenever he robbed the place, so after seeing the Dino Mechs on TV running villains out of Drumheller, he decided to go and try and rob the museum and challenge the Mechasaurs. Thing was, this guy was so cocky that a week ahead of his attack, he sent a video out to the news to say that he was coming for the Mechasaurs, so they had a little bit of prep time. Man was so sure he could win that he gave up element of surprise? This is... interesting tactic, though admittedly I somewhat respect him for not attacking in sneaking way, as well as respect his confidence. But was this misplaced confidence? These mechanical dinosaurs do look very tough for one man to handle despite their lack of weaponry. Honestly, he wasn't being that overconfident. The fight really could have gone either way. This guy was pretty stacked power-wise. The museum folks came to me asking for some extra firepower because they knew he was pretty tough. But a week wasn't enough time for me to build a whole new mech. It was just enough time to kind of kit out one of the ones I'd already made for him. See, I'd made this one called a Mech Ceratops that was probably the most durable of the lot, and I was able to replace the horns of that one and add a bunch of rockets and stuff to make it a lot more battle ready. Though they did make me promise to add only non-lethal rounds to it. Vi- I'm sorry, Vi wanted non-lethal rockets? How did you manage that? Well, you know, they said non-lethal, and we was talking about fighting Frost Dusk, who can take way more of a hit than a normal goon, so I made it non-lethal to him. Right, so still super lethal to a normal person. Yeah, this thing would turn regular old folks to a red puffy mist if it shot at them, so I'm glad they didn't hit no bystanders or nothing. Anyway, I flew out to Alberti and souped up the mech and renamed it the Triceratank. Hmm, no offense, but I think Tankceratops would have been better. I actually did think of that, and it does sound better, but it don't got the word try in the name, and this thing had three tank barrels coming out of the head, so I thought that was kind of essential. Alright, fair enough. So did this thing handle the Tusk guy itself, or did the other dinosaurs help too? Oh yeah, the whole crew got in on this fight, but the tank was the headliner. Frost Dusk showed up and the whole town was waiting to see what had happened. It was like an old classic western showdown. But, you know, with a super-powered mammoth man and a bunch of mechanical dinosaurs. Frost Dusk made a big show of the whole thing, really flaunting his powers off the top and saying that they'd never be able to stop the mammoth's rampage and blah blah blah. He sprinted at the Mecha Rex first since, you know, it kinda seemed like the leader of the group. It swung its tail at him and Frost Dusk managed to catch it and flip the Rex onto its back right away. He froze the thing to the ground and it was out of commission for the first few minutes of the battle. Well, that's a pretty bad start. Yeah, and the tank couldn't get a beat on the guy because he was moving around too fast, and the only time he slowed down was when he was close to one of the other mechs. Obviously, they wasn't looking to hit one of their own teammates, so they needed a way to get this guy out in the open and on his own for a shot. That's where the Mechadactyl really came in handy. Alright, now I don't know which one of you did it, but someone out there ratted out good old Benny Shop to the cops about selling those dinosaur posters from the last episode. That ain't cool to do, you know? I ain't saying I know who did it, but I'm looking at you two, Logan, Damon. 
I'm watching you. You ratting out good old bunny shop? What'd you do that for? Anyway, don't go tell nobody else, but we got more posters from this episode up on the Teespring store too. All these mecha dinosaurs are up there. Maybe even all four of them in one poster. Who knows? Go poking around in the description. Links are probably down there or something. But I don't want nobody else ratting out good old bunny shop, you hear? Buy the posters if you want, and if you don't, just leave it alone, eh? But anyway, back in the last drawn, alright? Let's go. Alright. Pterodactyl mech. You must have been happy to finally be making one of these things fly, yeah? Ah, uh, you really do know me, huh? I'm all about the flying mechs, and yeah, this was the only flying one in the group, unfortunately, but I made sure it was a real good one. Plus, the guy in the group I was making it for, Arnold, was pretty cool and had some fun requests. See, at first, I was gonna make it sort of like a jet with, <laughs> with a cockpit for him to fly inside of, but he wanted something a bit more fun than that. He wanted to ride on top of the thing, sort of like Ellie with a Velocimech, but beyond that, he wanted to surf on top of the thing. He wanted to surf on a flying dinosaur mech? Mm, this does not sound like an unreasonable request to me personally, Dr. Champagne. Many dragon riders in my world choose to ride their mounts in surfing position. Of course, this requires well-made foot straps and harnesses. Uh, did your mechanical dinosaur have this, Benjamin? Add something even better than that. Magnets. Magnets? Magnets. Blighten magnets? Yeah, magnets. Real intense magnets on the bottom of this guy's shoes so he could walk all over the thing and not just stick to one part. I built a button inside his gloves for each foot to activate and deactivate the magnets too, so he could lift his feet up when he needed to. Plus, he had a parachute in case he fell off. Arnold also asked me to make them back a bit on the old school looking side. The guy's grandpa had been one of them uh, Tuskegee Airmen, this renowned group of black pilots from World War II. So I guess he wanted the thing to look a bit like an old school fighter plane or something, reminiscent of what his old gramps would have flown. But when I heard old school, for some reason I thought a little bit more in the steampunk kind of zone. So that's kind of the way I went with it. Still, he thought it was pretty cool looking and showed up for the first flight in an old bomber jacket and it was pretty cool to watch the guy surf around on this thing. He was a natural. Right, right, it's pretty cool, but what did this thing do against the mammoth guy? Oh, yeah, right. So they was all fighting this guy, and Frost Tusk was doing a pretty good job of dodging everything and getting in close to hit and freeze the different mechs. So, Arnold and his mechadactyl had to swoop in and snatch the guy up off the ground. Of course, they didn't get him that far up before Frost Tusk ripped the foot off this thing and climbed up onto his back with Arnold. Right. Super-powered icy mammoth man who can flip a metal blatant T-Rex over versus some guy in a bomber jacket. Doesn't sound like this fight is gonna go real well for Arnold. Hey, don't underestimate the guy. See, he got the mechadactyl to start spinning through the air as fast as it could. Arnold got real dizzy for sure, but the magnets in his feet kept him stuck to the thing. Frost Dusk, on the other hand, he had to hold on real tight, and eventually the panel that he was holding onto on the mech just flew off and Frost Dusk started tumbling towards the ground. Once he started falling, he couldn't do much except, you know, fall. Right, so the Triceratank got its shot then, yeah? Exactly, it was like shooting fish with a barrel. What? Fish in a barrel, you mean? No, I mean like a barrel is real big ammo, so if you shot it at a fish, you'd probably hit it, you know? No, it's not... You know what? At this point, I do know you well enough to know that you're just gonna say that that's how people in your dimension save is saying, so whatever, go on. Nah, that's just how I say it. I think it makes more sense that way. Anyway, the Triceratank blasted the guy with all three barrels in one blow, and he was practically out cold in just that hit. They had the Triceratank then sit on him and pin him to the ground while they got some superpower suppressing cuffs on him, and that was the first time anyone had ever arrested Frost Dusk. Well, that's pretty impressive, I guess, and I'm guessing was even more good publicity for their museum, yeah? You got that right. Business was booming after that. Those folks are raking it in now, and I'm still making decent coin off my residuals from making the mechs. Well, good for them and good for you, I guess. But one thing I don't get, just as an aside, even in a bomber jacket, how is that Arnold kid not getting freezing riding around on a dinosaur's back? Like, maybe in summer that will be fine, but it gets around to winter? In Canada? Is he still riding that thing? Seems like he'd freeze to death. That's a good question, and I actually keep meaning to ask our buddy Sterling about that and how he handles it. Because he can fly by shooting fire out of his hands, but he's got to keep his body temperature up to use his fire powers. So how does he manage to keep flying if it's really cold in the... 
Dang, I should have stabbed him, he walked by a few minutes ago while I was mid-dino story. Speaking of Sterling, he seemed headed in direction of vault where friend Estra currently has portal open to the Bexiel's prison place where she is taking the gopher. Should we have told him what was going on? And Jerry just walked right on by, it seemed pretty stuck in his thoughts. Anyway, the picture's finally loaded, let's check it out! Well, it looks like I have a new favorite mech episode. I don't actually know what my previous favorite mech episode was, maybe Ben 10 Aliens as mech armors, or FNAF Animatronics as mech armors part 2, or maybe 3? I don't know. If you're new to the channel and you like this episode, you might like any of my other mech episodes. I'll link a whole playlist of them in the cards. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from the author Jim Quick who said that talking about our problems constantly is an addiction. Break the habit and talk more about your joys. If you want to be happier and in a better mood, talk more about things that make you happier and put you in a better mood. I hope that's inspiring to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.